Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Stop F, Spray Deodorant, Poof, There Goes Perspiration, and Finette, the Flowing Cream Shampoo. Yes, time now for What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, the brilliant young humorist who conducts his own very funny television show nightly, Monday through Friday on another network, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you, Thank you. Thank all of you. And now I, <laughs> I want you to meet one of the loveliest ladies in radio and television. She has her own show on another network. We're all working in a great many places these days. Arlene Francis. <laughs> and on my left, substituting for Bennett Surf tonight, a vastly entertaining gentleman who is packing them in with his own one-man show at the Golden Theater in New York, Mr. Victor Borger. And on my left, that well-known news commentator and moderator, Mr. John Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Once again tonight, we have some friends in from around and about the country who brought with them some very interesting occupations, and the panel will have to tussle with the occupations, Victor Borger getting his baptism of fire. We hope that they'll have a lot of trouble so that our guests will carry home some prizes, although the more important thing is that they have some fun. We'll also have a famous guest challenger a bit later on, but right now it's time for the experts to meet our first challenger whose job has to be spotted. Would you sign in, please, sir? J. L. May. Well, Mr. May, come on over here with me a bit. Don't be so far away. What's that J.L. stand for? Julius L. Julius L. May. Where are you from, sir? New York City. New York City. Well, then I don't think there are any strangers over there as far as you're concerned, but you may be a stranger to them. So would you go over and say hello, please? Hi. Good evening. Honey. All right, Mr. May, would you come over here now, please, and sit down next to me? I think perhaps you know that at this point, the panel gets one free guess as to what your line may be. We always begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think he's in the tailoring business. In the tailoring business, Mr. Allen. I think he's uh, in charge of bird seed at the old crow plant here in town. <laughs> Miss Francis. I think he's a tea bag tester. Mr. DeBorga. I think he's a floor walker. No, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mr. Julius May, and at the same time, we will tell them what his line is. But the panel's got a dig. Julius, 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 it is. That's what we'd had. Mr. May or Mr. Julius May, if I may. Oh. I think perhaps you know the rules here. Every time I flip a card, you've uh, given the panel a no answer. When you give them ten no answers, you've got it all in the bag. All set? All set. All, all right. right. If I don't hear what you're telling me. If you don't hear, I'll take care of everything. Don't worry about it. All right, Mr. May is salaried with that. Let's begin the general questioning with um, Steve Allen. Uh, tell me, Mr. Julius LaRosa May. <laughs> and thank you, Arlene. <laughs> uh, is there a product connected with what you do? Is there a product connected with what you yes. do? Yes. Is it the sort of thing that I might ever come into contact with? Is it the sort of thing that he might come into contact with? Yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, I can never tell why that question always uh, seems amusing. Uh... However, trying to figure it out, might I say that if I were to say, uh, wear this on Fifth Avenue, the people would laugh? If you were to wear this on Fifth Avenue, would the people laugh? If you were to wear it, I think they would. I think they would. Yes, I think they would. Mm -hmm. Could this be anything that uh, might be associated with a woman? Yes, it could be associated with a woman, don't you think? Yes. yes. <laughs> Is this something that uh, a man might give to a woman? Ye is this something a man might give to a woman? Yes, yes, I think so. Uh, are they, or is this, as the case may be, fairly expensive? Uh, is it, uh... 
could it be fairly expensive? expensive? Well, I would say this. I think it's only fair, and I think Mr. May would agree with me, that it could be expensive, yes. Don't you think? Absolutely. Yeah. Is this something a woman might pick up, say, uh, on Fifth Avenue around Tiffany's or Cartier's neighborhood? Something like that? Is this something that a woman might pick up on Fifth Avenue around Tiffany's or Cartier's? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if a man gave a woman one of these, uh, could she uh, wear it around her neck? <laughs> Mr. May makes the point that she could wear it around her neck, yes. <laughs> Let me come right out and straighten this whole thing out. Is this anything in the jewelry line at all? Is this anything in the jewelry line at all? No. No, that's one down of nine to go, Miss Francis. Is it possible that Mr. May may deal with something other than human beings? How do you mean that? <laughs> You know what is other than a human being, John. <laughs> Could he have anything to do with animals? Could he have anything to do with animals? No. No, yeah. I don't think so. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Bogan. Uh, if this is something Steve Allen can get in contact with, is it something I can get in contact with also? If what? Is it something Mr. Bogan could come in contact with? Oh, yes. Yes. As well as Steve Allen? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll split it with you, Victor, whatever. <laughs> Uh, it is something you could wear around the neck. Well, it... Yes, question, well, that was answered already, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the question was, could a woman wear it around the neck? And you yes, could wear it but, around the neck, uh, yes. Preferably she would not. That, yes, preferably she would not is right. Uh, would it be worn below the... Uh, <laughs> Below the lower neck? <laughs> <laughs> now, Victor, I think I'm going to have to give you a no on that. It would not be worn below the lower neck. <laughs> All right, let's like go, Dallas. Is, <laughs> Three dollars, seven to go. <laughs> All right, I want to know if Arlene and I could come in contact with this, and then we'll get the whole panel going. Miss Kilgan would like to know if she could come in contact with it. Oh, yes, yes. Would I enjoy coming in contact with it? I'm afraid not. No, I don't think so. Four down and six to go, Mr. Allen. Would I also not enjoy it? Would he also not enjoy coming in contact? I think not. Yeah, yes, you would not enjoy coming in contact with it, no. <laughs> well, then let's keep it off our necks, if that's too good. <laughs> turn out to be. Uh, it's unpleasant, then, in some way? It's uh, unpleasant in some way. It's bothering me, I'll tell you that. that. <laughs> yeah, Mr. May says he thinks that it might be unpleasant. In most cases, yes. Yes, indeed. In fact, we're having a hard time trying to think of a case where it wouldn't be unpleasant. Uh, is the idea of punishment at all associated with this product? Is the idea of punishment at all associated with this product? Mm, I think we'd have to say yes. Well, we, I guess we would. Yes. yes. Hmm. What can you wear around your neck that's... <laughs> a noose, darling. Uh, could you find these uh, associated with, with prisoners uh, in jails or something of that sort? Mm, associated with prisoners in jail. Uh, or no, in jail. I think that's uh, not mm. so. No, I don't think so. That's five down and five to go, and I'm going to give you another minute to try and get this, Miss Francis. You say, Mr. May, that all of us could come in contact with this, but would we, perhaps, we would not be likely to come in contact with it. I can't see a single soul on that panel who isn't likely to come in contact <laughs> with it. <laughs> that, that makes it six down and four to go, Mr. Bogger. It is something that is worn. <laughs> no. Seven down and three to go in 30 seconds. Miss Kilgallen. Is this so something that, in order to be used, must be imposed by one person upon another? Is this in something to be used would be imposed by one person on another? I think that's... Yes. Right. yes. I would say that would be call for uh, yes answer. Would anyone ever strike one a person with it? Strike a person yes, with it? or otherwise belabor. That would make it eight down and two to go. I'm going to flip the cards on time because I don't think you're even close to what this might be. Mr. May prints parking tickets. 
for New York and all the cities around the country. Now, Mr. Ray, you win the full prize. My and you, money to the March of Dimes, please. Your money to the March of Dimes. Yes, sir, the full prize is yours, and it will go to the March of Dimes. And thanks for your Well, panel, uh, a rather inauspicious beginning, but a lot of fun. Let's see what you can do with the second challenger. Would you sign in, please, ma'am? Amy E. Shorty. <laughs> Drea. You're not so short. You're not as short at all, as a matter of fact. Is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Greer, and where are you from? Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. Well, that's wonderful. Sounds very much like all of Texas moved to New York this weekend. Well, we've got some folks here from New York who would like to know people from Texas better. Would you go over and say hello to them? Hi. Hello. Hello, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> Mrs. Greer, I think perhaps you know that now that the panel's had a chance to meet you, we give them one free guess as to what your line may be. And we always begin with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Well, I think she's a steer roper. A steer roper, Mr. Allen. I think she's a rope steerer, and I think we've done these jokes before. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Francis. I think she teaches ballet. Mr. Bogger. I think she's awfully cute. That I'll buy. <laughs> that's not what we were looking for, so we'll let our viewers have another look at Mrs. Charles Greer of Houston, Texas. <laughs> and now, Mrs. Greer, the panel's just uh, got to take it from here, and I'll flip a card every time you give me no answer. All set? All right, Mrs. Greer is self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Victor Boga. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> 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 Involved. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, is this a thing? Could it be found in a in a home in the? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, it could be, but I do want to stress that it is not necessarily normal that one should find one in a home. Uh, but it could be found. It could be found in a home. Thank you. <laughs> um, could it be found outside the home? Yes. Um, could it? Uh, Could I wear it outside when could I go you, out? Could you wear it outside when you go out? I'm afraid not. Could I take it with me? Could I take it with me when well, I go out? You could, but you couldn't wear it, Victor, so I've got to give you a no. No, but that. my question was actually not could I, could I wear it. <laughs> I meant could I take it with me when I go out? Yeah, but you didn't say that. You Did said I? wear. Yep. So that's one time night to go, Miss Kilgallen. Give me a pack on the chair now. Still <laughs> <Get> wet. <laughs> what it is. Would this thing be unwieldy to carry in the hand? Would this be unwieldy to carry in the hand? Yes. Uh, does it uh, ever move around? Yes. Is this anything that is or has been living? Yes. Is it in the animal kingdom? Yes. Is it a four-legged animal? Yes. Is it uh, usually larger than a bread box when full-grown? <laughs> yes. Could be. Yes, when full-grown. Yes. Yes. Are, are there a lot of these things in Texas? 
A lot of these things in Texas? No. No. I thought there was a lot of everything in Texas. <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Do you have something to do with a four-legged animal that is very scarce in Texas, huh? <laughs> is it a, I, I think it was very clever of me to figure that out. <laughs> is it an animal that might be more at home in another part of the world? Yes. Uh, in the tropical sections of the world, perhaps? Yes. Gesundheit. Uh, is it a wild animal sort of thing, like lions, tigers, something in that family? Well, we might say Elephants, it, zebras, It belongs in, in the wild category, yes. Is it a cat of any kind? A cat? Yes. Three down and seven to go. <laughs> Is this an animal that ever <coughs> interested Darwin? <laughs> yes, I believe he had some interest in it. This animal then is part of either the monkey orangutan or gorilla family? What a family. Is it a member of the monkey orangutan or gorilla family? <laughs> I would think it might be, wouldn't it? Yes. Well, does it come under one of the categories I mentioned? Well, I haven't looked under one of the categories. <laughs> <laughs> I would say yes. <laughs> uh, can this animal be trained to do amusing things? Yes, it could be. That still could be an orangutan, a gorilla, or a monkey. Uh, However, it doesn't have four legs. I tell you, we'll, we'll, we'll knock one of them off. Is it perhaps in the monkey family? Well, no, you drew the definitions yourself, so yes, we'll I take did. four down and six to go. Myself. Mr. Borger? It was established that it had four legs. Yes. A monkey does not have four legs. It's two and two arms. <laughs> 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 For the purposes of this program, we are consider that all three of these species have four legs. Oh. <laughs> and that's hat. <laughs> well, is it in the gorilla family? Yes. Then Mrs. Greer has something to do with gorillas. Yes. Does she raise or train them? Uh, that isn't, uh... I'm afraid That's the right one. It. Mr. Allen? She's a nice girl. <laughs> you don't raise them or train them. She you sells them. That makes it six down and four to go, Miss Francis. She buys them. That makes it seven down and three to go, Mr. Borger. He eats them. <laughs> I flip them all. She imports them? She hunts them. She goes what? to French what? Equatorial Africa and hunts them. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Greer, are you going out any time again soon? Well, I hope to. Can I give you some hunters to take the next, with you? The next time I go, I would like to take some hunters with me. All right, I give you a Mr. Borger, Mr. Allen. We're gorillas. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get the full prize, and our thanks for being a wonderful guest. Thanks Thank for you. joining us, and what's my life? In just a moment, we'll meet tonight's mystery guest. But right now, a special announcement. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, my friends in the panel, as well as our audience here, all of you will recognize our guests immediately, so we gave the panel members blindfolds. Are they all in place, panel? Mm -hmm. Good. Will you come in, Mystery Challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with Miss Arlene Francis. Are you associated with some branch of the entertainment industry? Uh, yes. Are you, uh, have you been in pictures? Uh, yes, ma'am. And judging from your voice, you've been in them a long time. <laughs> Quite a long time, ma'am. Are you, uh, a character actor? No, sort of. Are you a Western star? I'd sure like to be, ma'am. 
I think you can make it. <laughs> then I got a, uh, what did I get on that? Well, actually, I would um, think that our guest laugh. has <laughs> covered so wide a scope in Hollywood that oh. uh, you just keep on trying and I cover see. all the ground. All right. Are you, would you be considered the leading man, the star of the picture? Well, I, I guess so. <laughs> right. Have you been in uh, uh, radio? Yes, ma'am. And the theater? Yes, ma'am. Uh, were you in either of these mediums before you were in pictures, or have they happened since you went into pictures? That cannot be answered yes or no, Miss Francis. That's I'm what I figured. <laughs> but I thought maybe, maybe he'd be carried away. <laughs> were you in radio or the theater before you went into pictures? Yes, I was. Oh. Well, were you a star in uh, either radio or the theater? Mm-mm. That makes it one down and nine to go, Mr. Borger. We have just a little more than three minutes to go. Do you have two legs? <laughs> yes, Mr. Porter. Um, you, thank you. Are you? Uh, it is established that you only play. Uh, do you play dramatic parts only? Sometimes. Do you play them only sometimes? <laughs> A lot of people have told me. <laughs> I see. Then you also do comedy parts. V very, very rare. Uh, but you do them. So the answer is yes. That used to be an art. My mind is open. I can't see a thing, and I don't know what to ask. <laughs> All right, we have. <laughs> panel, we only have about two minutes and fifteen seconds to go. Miss Kilgallen. Uh, when you were in the New York theater, were you in a dramatic play rather than a musical? Uh, yes. Were you ever in a play in which there was a scene in a hospital? Mm, nope. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Two minutes to go. Is there a product connected with what you're doing? <laughs> well, let me see. I will assume it's motion picture. Are you over 40? Uh, no. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Oh, you're a young man. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you playing in any picture uh, currently on Broadway? No, ma'am. Four down and six to go, Mr. Borger. You are playing in any picture that doesn't play on Broadway. <laughs> Have you very recently had a very big hit? <coughs> no. <laughs> five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. One minute. Have you ever played bad men? Yes, ma'am. Have you ever played gangsters? Who won? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Did you ever have a distinguishing characteristic that was imitated by little kids all over the country? Yes, ma'am. Ah. <laughs> you, have I gotten you mixed up? I think I have. Uh, well, um... Take a dive at it, Dorothy. All right, um, just one, no, one more question. Did you ever push an old lady down the stairs? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Are you Dick Widmark? Yes, Dick Widmark, he's right. <laughs> I would say this. Mr. Bobby doesn't want to see him. <laughs> <Not at all. laughs> Dick, um, I know that uh, you're in town to help the March of Dimes, but I believe that uh, there's another reason why yes, you're Yes, I'm here also here, here uh, on behalf of the March of Dimes to open a new uh, 20th Century Fox Cinemascope production called Hell and High Water. And uh, by the way, John, uh, one of the stars of the picture, Hell and High Water, I believe is in the audience tonight, Miss Bella Darby. Oh, how nice to see her. Would you stand up? Thank you. Thank you very much, Dick. Not only nice of you to come, but to think you'd bring such a pretty lady with you. <coughs> nice to have had you with us. Would you say hello to you? <laughs> Victor, you got those blinders off? Yep. Got the blinders off already? Right. <coughs> and until next week, when David Wayne will be here to substitute for our missing panelist, Bennett Cerf, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, Steve. Good night, boys, and good night... <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm here. Good, <laughs> good night. And it was wonderful to have you on the show, Victor. Come back and see us again. Thank you very much. Good night, Johnson. <laughs> good night. And may I say... May I say, Victor, you were a lot of fun, too. I hope you come back real soon. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line? <laughs>